Hey everyone, today we're reviewing one of Waterdrop's reverse osmosis flagships, the X12, which is a tankless under the sink system. Now, most importantly, and as usual, I want to discuss the filtration results the Waterdrop X12 could achieve in our lab testing for real life contaminant reduction, but also all of the other things, especially how much water the Waterdrop X12 really wastes. So let's go. Okay, so the Waterdrop X12 was part of our big under sink reverse osmosis comparison featuring 11 different models. And I'm gonna link the video here and it performed really well. However, the X12 didn't become our top recommendation mainly because it's pretty expensive and as such doesn't appeal to a broader audience. But in case you don't mind the higher price tag, I want to go through all our test results and other pros and cons of the Waterdrop X12 today. First and foremost, we hired an independent lab to compare the level of undesirable impurities and contaminants in our water before and after filtration. We also did a taste and odor test of the freshly filtered water, and we measured how fast the Waterdrop X12 can provide filtered water, given that it's tankless and has to filter on demand. And finally, we measured the amount of wastewater produced. Side note, based on our most recent testing, and depending on how you're using the system, it's far from what you'd expect, but more on that in a bit. And because for all of this, we had to install, prime, and use the system, just like you would do as a regular user, we also gained plenty of hands-on experience. As always, you can find our full analysis of the Waterdrop X12, including lab reports, in addition to the other 10 under sink ROs we tested in this Google Sheet, which I'll link in the video description. And if you want, you can use the sheet to make your own comparison. And the sheet also contains all our product links and some exclusive discount codes, including one for the X12. So remember to check these in case you wanna make a purchase and save a few bucks while supporting our work. All relevant links and codes will also be included in the description below. Please also remember to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. All right, on to our lab testing. After installing and priming the Waterdrop X12 following the provided instructions, we took two water samples. So one was our raw tap water and one was our tap water after it had been processed by the X12. And we sent both samples to a professional lab for analysis and waited for the lab reports to come back. Okay, before we take a look at the lab results, please keep in mind that such before versus after lab testing, it's not an exact science, so it doesn't provide 100% accurate results for several reasons, such as natural fluctuations of contaminant levels in the water. And also we can only test for the reduction of contaminants that are actually present in our water. Still, how did the water drop X12 perform? Not bad at all. The following contaminants were removed to below the minimum detection level, so essentially to 100%. Chlorine, bromodichloromethane, bromoform, dibromochloromethane, and chloroform. These four are disinfection byproducts. We also saw 100% reduction of the following metals. Copper, barium, and lithium, and uranium was also removed to 100%. Where we didn't see 100% reduction was for boron at 50%, strontium 92%, nitrate 74% minimum reduction, and fluoride at 64% minimum reduction. For boron, some of the other under sink RO systems we tested performed better, but 92% reduction in strontium was a negligible difference to some of the other under sink RO systems we tested, and that removed up to 100%. The same probably goes for the 74% minimum nitrate reduction, and 64% minimum fluoride reduction is at least as good as any of the other systems. And by the way, minimum reduction means that traces of the impurities remained in the filtered water, but it was so little that the lab couldn't quantify how much was left. And as such, we could only calculate minimum reduction rates, but reduction might've been in the high 90s, we don't know. Also, in case you wonder why we only saw 84% TDS reduction, that's because the Waterdrop X12 uses remineralization, which increases TDS post-filtration. So in this case, it's not a performance issue. And so all in all, the Waterdrop X12 achieved solid results in our lab testing. And we also didn't see any signs of chemical leaching. But speaking of remineralization, we weren't exactly blown away by the lab results here. Why? Because compared to the under sink RO systems we tested that don't remineralize, we barely saw an increase in magnesium levels in the X12 water. For calcium, the lab measured 8.67 ppm, which is more than the non remineralization average, but still not even close to the WHO minimum recommended level of 20 ppm and far from the 50 ppm optimum. As for overall alkalinity, the water drop X12 could barely reached the minimum recommended threshold of 30 ppm. So in other words, while it doesn't hurt, don't expect too much from the X12's remineralization stage. Okay, anything else about filtration? 
Well, yes, we have certification against NSF standard 58 for TDS reduction, which is a start, although we certainly would have preferred more contaminants covered. WaterDrop also provides some additional test data for chromium-6, lead, nitrate, fluoride, PFOS, PFOA, and some more. Although not complete in terms of contaminants covered, the results look good. But as usual, they need to be taken with a grain of salt because they are not official NSF certifications. What else? Well, in our taste and odor test, the filtered water seemed perfectly clean. And finally, for filtration, we have 11 different filter stages, although this doesn't really matter. What matters is that we have the go-to filtration process for this type of RO system with sediment and carbon filters before and after the RO membrane. Now, plus, we have the remineralization stage. And we even have a UV light, which is used to kill germs. But to be honest, we're not exactly sure about the benefit for most users because we believe that with this type of tankless RO system, UV only makes a difference if you have potentially harmful germs in your water that need to be eradicated. But at least in theory, this shouldn't be the case if you're on tap water. But UV also doesn't hurt, so why not? Also, the UV light turns off when not needed, so this should save energy. Great, how about usability? Now let's start with system installation and filter priming. The process is easy. First, turn off the cold water supply valve and disconnect the kitchen faucet's cold water line. Connect the X12's T-valve adapter to the cold water supply valve and connect the kitchen faucet's cold water line to the other end of the T-valve adapter. Next, drill a hole in the sink's drain pipe and install the drain saddle. Now the drain saddle was slightly too large for our sink drain pipe, but we could easily fix this by using an extra piece of flexible foam board. After drilling a hole in the kitchen sink or counter, feed the X12's faucet power cord and water tube through the hole and screw on the fastening nut to tighten into place. It was impossible to film this part from underneath due to the placement of the faucet hole, but this is how it works. Next, connect the tubes to the filter unit, which is easy since everything is color-coded. Then connect the faucet power cord and the filter's main power cable and slide the unit into place under the sink. Plug in the filter and it will automatically flush for 30 minutes. After that, it's ready to use. I do want to mention here that the filters come pre-installed, and when we first started up our system, the filters leaked slightly. After a little bit of trial and error, figured out that if we uninstalled and reinstalled the filters, everything was fine with no more leaking. Once set up, the WaterDrop X12 is very straightforward to use, and also thanks to this really cool looking faucet that allows you to dispense anywhere from five to 64 ounces of water or continuously. So how this works is you simply turn the dial on the top of the faucet to set the number of ounces you'd like to pour. Then press the button and the faucet will dispense the amount that you chose. For continuous pouring, set the system to 999 ounces. Press the button to dispense and press it again to stop. The next time you use the faucet, it will automatically default to the previous number of ounces chosen. Now, in case you didn't notice, what the faucet doesn't allow you to do is control flow speed so that when you try to fill a small cup or glass, water may splash, especially at the start of the dispense, because there seems to be a pressure spike. This is not an issue if you're filling a large glass, but some customers did complain about this. And so if you insist on filling small containers, what you could do is activate the so-called faucet mode, which alters faucet flow speed so that there's a nice ramp up to the pour. Now the downside to faucet mode is there is also a ramp down at the end of dispensing, whereas in standard mode, when you stop dispensing, the water cleanly shuts off. Now also in faucet mode, you can't connect your refrigerator or ice maker to the X12 any longer. And activating the mode first requires you to turn the system off and on again. So you can't jump back and forth between different modes. In addition to faucet mode, there's the energy saving mode. And as the name suggests, it reduces electricity consumption and it reduces pump noise, but the noise didn't even bother us in the regular mode. So also to our knowledge, energy saving mode means somewhat slower filtration. Now, speaking of, in our speed test, the X12 could dispense one cup in just 4.25 seconds, which is not only extremely impressive, but also faster than any other tankless system we've tested. Now, also, let's not forget that while some of the tank-based RO systems we've tested could dispense water even faster with the full tank, the X12 provides filtered water at a constant flow, so it won't run empty. You're also much less dependent on high water pressure in your home thanks to the built-in booster pump. There's also a TDS display on the faucet for easy monitoring and a filter change indicator, so you'll know exactly when you need to replace one or more of the modular filters. And faucet aside, the WaterDrop X12 has a very sleek design and the system looks and feels well-made. Also, tankless means space saving. Filter replacements, extremely simple. All you need to do is twist out the modular cartridge or cartridges and twist in the new. 
Then you reset the filter life indicator and prime the newly installed filters. Okay, we performed one final test, and that was to measure the X12's real life pure to drain ratio. Now it turns out that together with the Cloud RO, the WaterDrop X12 has the lowest wastewater ratio of the 11 under sink ROs we've tested at this point, with only 0.5 gallons of water wasted per one gallon purified. In other words, if you dispense one gallon of RO water from the faucet, only 0.5 gallons of wastewater go down your drain, which is really good when you consider that a traditional tank-based RO wastes somewhere around three to five gallons per gallon purified, or even more. However, what this exceptional pure to drain ratio doesn't take into account is the automatic flushing that the WaterDrop X12 performs on a regular basis. Because whenever you dispense water, followed by 10 minutes of non-use, the X12 will auto flush itself. Why? To make sure that you can dispense water at any time without experiencing TDS creep. Now, I don't want to get into this in too much detail, but to our knowledge, basically with any regular home RO, tankless or tank-based, if you're not using the system for a few hours or overnight, for example, the pressure on both sides of the RO membrane will start to equalize causing a phenomenon called TDS creep, where some of the TDS, so the dissolved impurities in your water, which the RO membrane is actually supposed to reject, creep over to the clean water side. And so the next time your RO system produces new water, the first batch coming from the membrane will contain more TDS than usual. With a tankless system, this water will come right out of the faucet. And with a tank base system, some may come out of the faucet, but most of it will probably end up and dilute in the storage tank, slightly affecting the TDS level of the water that's already inside said tank. Now, what's important to note here is that not all dissolved solids are bad. In fact, if you check our lab reports, you'll find that the vast majority of dissolved solids in our tap water are sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and a few other minerals. Also, TDS creep or not, any water that reaches the RO membrane has already undergone treatment due to the pre-filter stages, meaning chances are that some of the potentially harmful dissolved solids have already been removed. And finally, unless very sensitive to small taste changes, most people will never notice when their RO water is affected by TDS creep, unless they use a TDS meter, of course. And this is kind of what the WaterDrop X12 does. Now remember, it has a TDS display integrated into its faucet. And so we're assuming that the WaterDrop has added the automatic flushing feature to avoid TDS creep and ultimately to avoid people from getting confused by their X12 faucet displaying a higher TDS level after hours of non-use, think in the morning, and blaming that on a malfunctioning system. And so in our opinion, the auto flushing is a useful feature for many people. However, it produces additional wastewater. How much? We measured 47.5 ounces per flushing cycle, so almost six cups, which is significant. So let's say you dispense one cup of filtered RO water. Based on the pure to drain ratio we measured, this produces no more than half a cup of wastewater. However, after 10 minutes of the X12 sitting idle, the automatic flushing will kick in and produce another six cups of wastewater. So now you have one cup of filtered water versus six and a half cups of total wastewater. So nowhere near the initial two to one pure to drain ratio we measured. Now, good news is if you dispense large amounts of filtered water at once, filling a large glass carafe or something like that, you can greatly reduce your wastewater proportion because regardless of how much water you dispense, the X12 will always use the same amount of water when flushing. So if you dispense half a gallon of purified water in one go, you get around 0.6 gallons of total wastewater, so almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Still, this is probably not what most people would expect, and admittedly, we didn't either until we ran our tests. But is this a deal breaker? Honestly, no, because the auto flushing is optional and it can be turned off. All you need to do is shut the system power off, turn it back on, and then press the F1 icon five times in a row. If you hear two beeps, the X12 will stop auto flushing until you decide to turn the feature back on. So if too much wastewater bothers you, you can simply deactivate auto flushing and then you get a true two to one wastewater ratio as we measured. But be prepared for higher TDS readings whenever your X12 has been sitting idle. But again, this should affect all regular home RO systems unless they make use of circular auto flushing. So the X12 doesn't have a disadvantage here. Okay, finally, I wanna talk 
costs. As mentioned in the beginning, the Water Drop X12 is pretty expensive. Now, currently the regular price tag is $1,299. Now, good news is the system is usually on discount and we also have an exclusive discount code, which gives you an additional 5% off on top of any sale that's currently running. So don't forget to check the video description or our Google Sheet. As for the filter replacement cost, based on the average filter life of six months for the pre-filter, two years for the RO membrane, and one year for the post-filter, we estimate around $175 annually, which is a tad more compared to most of the other under sink ROs we tested, but at least you can save 5% with a filter subscription. All right, anything else? Yes, there's a two year limited warranty and we found WaterDrop's customer service to be helpful. So in summary, we think the WaterDrop X12 is a great tankless under sink reverse osmosis system because it seems to be highly effective removing undesirable impurities and contaminants and provides water that tastes and smells perfectly clean. It is great in terms of usability and filters water faster than any other RO system we tested. It features a quality build. It had the lowest pure to drain ratio in our test and the auto flushing feature counters TDS creep. On the downside, the system isn't affordable for everyone. We would have preferred additional NSF certifications, and the auto flushing significantly adds to the amount of wastewater produced depending on how you're using the system, but auto flushing is optional. Okay, remember that you can check out our Google Sheet, which lists everything you need to know about the WaterDrop X12. Also, check out the sheet and the video description for our product link and discount code in case you want to make a purchase. You can also use the sheet to compare the X12 against 10 other undersink ROs. And you could also check out our big undersink RO comparison video. We also have a countertop RO comparison, and all links are in the video description and here on our channel. And as always, please don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And let us know which water filters you would like us to review next. Thanks for watching. Thank you.